to talk a little bit about 50, my, the 53 Corvettes, and some of you might know, but a couple of members of the club in, the, in a weak moment failed to buy this car, including your president. <laughs> and uh, I had a chance to buy this car up in Jeddah, Michigan, and it's one of those cars that was uh, all it needed was everything. <laughs> and so uh, I set up, and I was so naive, I thought that, well, geez, really, the only thing really wrong with this car is it's got the wrong drivetrain in it. Somebody put a V8 and a turbo hydromatic in it. So I'll just buy a 54 Corvette and take the 54 drivetrain and drop it in there and then make a hot rod out of the 54, because 54s are pretty inexpensive. And then I got a little bit of an education that the 53 and 54 drivetrains are pretty much mutually exclusive. I, mean, I could have bought a 54 and had very little that I could have used in my application. And so, luckily for me, I was uh, I met uh, I got the name of a guy, Brett Henderson, who uh, was is intimately familiar with these cars. And when I was offered the opportunity to come and speak to you about 53s, I could just tell you about the, 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 every time I stubbed my toe and he bailed me out. So I figured I'd invite him up here. He lives outside Indianapolis. He graciously accepted my invitation to come up here and talk to you a little bit about. And I'm, we're really going to focus on the differences between the 53 and the 4 and uh, get you a little bit familiar with these old fossil cars, as Mr. Dunham calls them. So, with that, I'd like to introduce Brett Henderson and uh, let's give him a warm welcome. And just to spoil a little bit of his thunder, uh, he's the guy that recreated the Corvair that was on display at Amelia Island last year and has come to a bunch of our shows. So the guy is an extremely talented craftsman and he'll, he'll, see some of the, he'll talk a little bit about how he created that and what he's got going on as far as future endeavors. So, welcome. All right. Thank you. No, actually, I'm just a, a hack from Pendleton, Indiana. <laughs> Warner asked me to talk about 53s. Uh, 53s kind of my niche. I bought my first one in 2003. And I've been a Corvette kid here since probably 1965, when my dad bought his 1961. And if I close my eyes real, real good and reach out my hand, I can still feel that the Honduras maroon underneath all that hard shell turtle wax. <laughs> you, you, you have things that you remember. Uh, but that got me started, and I bought my first Corvette in '78, my first '53 in, in 2003. Um, Good friends with Joe Thomas. We're in the ZR1 gang, so we do a little bit of that too. So um, there are many differences uh, just in 53s alone, besides being different in 53s to 54s. Um, I'm on my, I got a scratchy throat, so I'm going to cough a little bit, but um, on my 15th 53 right now that I've restored, I've got a uh, number 71 in the wings waiting. Uh, so I've had a lot of them apart, had a lot of 54s apart as well in the other years, but my niche is, is 53 to 55. Uh, this is this is the uh, this is the front right inner fender inside the fender well. And if you'll look at this cloth, strips of cloth that connect all this. Um, in 54 they have a bonding strip that connects your front uh, radiator baffles to your front upper surround panel and your inner fenders to the upper surround panel as well. In 53 to early 54, uh, they cut strips of cloth and just this is this is where your inner fender rivets to your hood surround right here. This is your radiator baffle. This is your inner. This is looking at it from inside the wheelhouse. Inside the wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. You can see above this line here, that cloth, that's his front end. So the first layer, or the last layer when the front end was made, was the 1044 cloth. So your first layer's cloth, your second layer's mat, your third layer's cloth. Uh, Inner fender, and this is car 79. That's probably a bag molded part. Probably not press molded, but bag molded. Uh, with the male and the female and a bag between on each side to keep it from sticking to your mold. Uh, then they pull it apart, take the bag off. More of the same, inner fender to the radiator baffle, here's a cloth connected to the upper surround panel on the inside. Is that what they use? These are rivets 
Okay. That's a Phillips screw that held a J clip for your wiring harness. Okay. If your headlight. They go a lot in November and December. Gotcha. Yeah. This is the opposite wheel well. Yeah, this is the driver's side. Use your nut plate for your hood support. Uh, same deal with the cloth. Um, <laughs> I had part 52, I just got done putting it together. And the hole for the rubber grommet, they they had them oversized. So what they did, they cut these big squares of cloth and just laminated over and cut a new hole. So it looked really crappy. I think this is the back side of the, of the inner fender, if I'm not mistaken. In, the inner fender and where the, the radiator baffle goes up, I think. It's definitely inner fender. Inner fenders, oh, it's a corner that I was trying to show. You are talking about the sharpness of the corners. The oh, fenders. yeah. 53s versus 54s. If you've looked at a lot of them, you can open the hood up, look at the upper firewall, um, and even the inner fenders, and you'll be able to tell if it's 53 or 54. Because your firewall, the, 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 the edges, um, everything's on a 53, an early 54, it's kind of flattened out, the edges are. Now, on a later 54 and 55s, the edges are more pronounced, they're sharper. So you're talking like this, this area right here has got a pretty good radius to it. And really yeah, it, and it, it'll be more rounded, especially the upper firewall. Um, where the top of the firewall is on the passenger side above your heater motor, those edges on a 54 are much more sharp than the 53s. Um, it's, just a dot, it's just the molds they had. This is his inner fender from uh, 79, a little nick out of it. But later, they put a notch in here, a little round notch, for your brake block. And you're looking at a small brake line um, on the front left side. 53 and, and very early 54. This hole for your wiper drum pulley is, you can see where they, they drilled. Then they, then they took a, a jigsaw and cut those holes. When they moved to St. Louis, uh, they, they discovered hole saws. And somebody probably got a pretty good payout for a, a suggestion. Um, because that hole became round. So if you see, you see a 53, you can look under the dash, and if that hole is not square, it's probably not the original body. And there's a lot of 53s without the original bodies. Underneath the dash, uh, this is where your, your courtesy light will be. Uh, there's a metal plate that goes here that Werner's got off his right now. Uh, uh, this is for your parking brake. It's a metal plate that your hood pull attaches to. And on the 53 or 54, you've got a hood pull on each side. A lot of you probably already know that. Um, but on the passenger side, this piece of steel that runs, I call it a strap, it runs along the bottom of the lower dash. On the passenger side, you won't have a a piece of steel plate that your hood pull attaches to. It just has two screws going up through that piece of steel. And that hood pull on the driver's side, if you had them sitting them side by side, the hood pull on the driver's side is longer than the hood pull on the passenger side because it comes out to that plate. Uh, Warner's. Ah, Warner does have. Somebody's asked me about that earlier. We are talking about the, the fuel door. You got an early fuel door. Uh, this fuel door There'll be a hole drilled behind here, behind here, goes through with two nuts and bolts. This, this fuel door will open up, if you have the top of your fender, the fuel door will open up underneath the fender. Or the later cars, it opens up over the top of the fender. There's about three different designs. And also on a 54 versus a 53, 53 has two drain holes, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. 54 will have one here. And it'll have a nipple molded into it, and you'll have a hose going down uh, so for the excess gas to go out. That's no, another difference between a 53 and a 54. This is the body mount. This was enclosed and it's been cut out so the body mount can be accessible. This is behind the seats in the corners. 53s, early 54s, the, the piece of fiberglass behind the seats that comes down to the floor in glues and rivets. And along here as well. This body mount on a 53, the bolt goes from the bottom up and there's a caged nut that's riveted to the floor 
that that body bolt threads into. Well, as the bolt and the nut rust over the years, you try and take that out, you can't. It just spins because the aluminum rivets just spin right out of the fiberglass. So you have to cut this opening to get to get to this this mount. Then you hard rivet. You fix your hole. You hard rivet another nut plate in there, and then you enclose this. But that's one way you can tell a three from a four. Now, early fifty fours up through about the first eight or nine hundred cars, this was enclosed. If you guys got solid axles, you look at any one of these in here behind the seat. That opening is is accessible. They, they did away with this little piece that comes down to the floor about so far in rivets. Same way on the on the passenger side. See so this comes down. This actually bends down. You got your rivets. In the later 54, this is just cut straight across. <clears throat> so this pocket here is accessible. And on the body mounts go, the body bolts go from the top down when that happens. 53 versus 54. This area here is cut down pretty low. If you look at a 54 and later, this is about up to here. Well, not quite even with this edge, but it's it's very much higher by a couple inches. This is inside the right rear, right rear wheel well. You see a 1044 cloth in here. This is your uh, area between your rocker panel where your antenna cable runs on a, on a 5345. This hole there, that shouldn't have been there. That's that hole we were looking at a minute ago. I guess this is deck lid. The, the holes in the deck lid for the convertible top receivers, they're oblong. And if you ever dealt with these convertible tops on a 53 to 45, they're very flimsy, except for the later version uh, with the helper springs. They're, they're pretty good. But the, early, the earlier ones, when you go to latch that down, you've really got to, they don't want to stay latched very well. And you've got to kind of manipulate them around. So. Without that being oblong at all, uh, for adjustment, uh, yeah, this is a this is a convertible top receiver for 535. Mm -hmm. The back side, that's that's that holes a, it's quite a bit bigger than this, so you do have a little left to right movement as well, not a lot, but on the very early ones like 52, they don't have any adjustment at all. Convertible deck lid on the early ones. This is cut out, and this cloth is put in here by hand for a recess. Because when the, this is the, this is the side of the, of the deck lid. When you got your convertible top arms in there, when you try and shut that, it's it's really pushing on that convertible top, and it actually the deck lid will kind of puff up on the edges. So. They cut reliefs in there and just use cloth to make a recess. <coughs> then they started molding the, the frame because you got a frame and you got a skin. They started molding the frames with that recess in them. Same recess, other side. If you'll notice too, the frames on the 53 and the early 54, you get the frame, and this is the back side of the skin. Later in 54, they stopped making these cutouts. You'll see three, you'll see two cutouts on the side, and a big long cutout in the middle. So on the later cars, they didn't have this cutout. The, the, the frame was just all solid. So that's one way you can tell if you got a 53 or a 54 deck lid as well, early 50. 53 valve cover. Um, I should have had a picture of a 53 passenger cover. 53 passenger cover has an oil fill in the front, typically, none in the middle. And these recesses are actually raised up. Um, the edges, you can see it come to a point on each side of the cover, front end, rear. And this first vent on a passenger car is a half inch longer forward, like this one here. I made this cover. This, this, is, this is a reproduction 53 cover. 53 covers are slanted in the front, corners are rounded, the recesses, the, the recesses are done, 
I've got a die actually and we heat this up and press those down um, and the oil fill is added to the middle. Um, I, I saw a real one of these for sale at Bloomington and uh, I thought I'd like to own it <laughs> until I realized that there was a few too many zeros behind the price. <laughs> On the wrong side of the decimal point. Any guesses what somebody with a valve cover like that, a real one, would be worth? Ten grand. Yeah, who planted it? How much? Ten thousand dollars. The fifty-three two thirty-five, not two sixteen, but the fifty-three two thirty-five block and head will be the same as a Corvette. The casting numbers will be different. The head on the the two thirty-five is an eight eight seven head. Geometry and everything is the same. The hole for your uh, temperature sender is small like it's supposed to be. So basically, I changed the date. The date is underneath the valve cover. Most of them are F193. So I changed that date to F193 and changed this string of numbers in the GM1 um, to the 336066. Because uh, it, it, they say 887. Those are the casting numbers that I put on there. Um, and they're magnetic. Somebody filled in a nose hole for the nose that on one of his car. He's got a real nice body. Most of them, most of them the lower glance is shot. Um, they've been tagged on both corners and right in the front. He's actually got a nice opening for his real opening. On the 53 hood, when you've got your radiator support, your radiator, and you got hood pop-ups, little springs. In 53 and early 54, they had this added on piece for that hood pop to hit, hood pop up to hit. In 54, they made this part of the hood just come over more, so they did away with this extra piece. It held on with clutch head, generally, not always. Uh, some of them are big Phillips. Um, I made, you can't get these, so I, I cobbled together two of them that I had that were broke, because they're, they're like a phenolic almost, they're kind of an orange color. You see the, the natural color, yeah. that one's chipped. And they're, they're pretty brittle. So I created a couple of them up. I made a urethane mold and I make those for 53s and early 54s. And I just had to do that out of necessity. There's a lot of parts I had to start making out of necessity. For A, we couldn't get them, or B, I just wasn't going to pay that much for them. <laughs> because they were repro parts and I just wasn't going to pay out the nose for a repro part if I could make it myself. That's the other hood pop. Now they glue on and screw on. Okay, this is car number 130. Um, first 53 I never did for anybody. Uh, it was Woody Burton and his brother Dan. Dan's the congressman. Woody's a state representative. They're both from Indiana. Their, their stepfather bought this car in 1954. He traded a, a Studebaker wagon that wouldn't back up. <laughs> I had $1,500 for the Corvette had in their family all these years. He wow. just sold it about a year ago. Wow. Wow. And he drove that. In 2003, he drove it from Minneapolis all the way to the Corvette Museum for a show they had with just 53 to 5s up front in the museum. And that's where I met Woody. And then uh, I restored the car from him, and then he hardly ever drove it again. That's the bad thing about it. If, if it doesn't matter, you can drive anywhere you want. You know, you guys know. Once you go through all that effort, you don't want to lose your crispness and all that. <laughs> and you don't drive anymore. You don't, even, you don't even enjoy them anymore. So I applaud the guys that drive the restored cars. Um, the color of the fiberglass. <coughs> As you can see, those latches were on there before they did the blackout. But that collar is kind of a, kind of a pea green, greenish yellow. Um, later on, in uh, mid-54 and 55, the glass evolved. It evolved from that collar to a cream collar to then a white. You can sandblast this white fiberglass and it's just like a baby's butt. It's just nice and smooth. You don't have to do hardly any prep work. You sandblast one of these early ones, it looks like the surface of the moon. It looks like a sponge. And you've got a lot of, a lot of labor to get it smooth again. Oh, did they? So you got the original surface type. Yeah. You're a lucky guy. 53 is smooth. 54 has a, a recessed band here and here for rigidity once it's pressurized. Uh, they do repro these as well. 
you take a 54 tank and make it into a 53, but most of the time, over time, you can start seeing where the bands were. And they're heavier. That's why I was doing this. These little bullet air cleaners, they repopped them at one time. They say Botger on them. The repops didn't say Botger. That's the only way you can tell the difference between the repop. I also, uh, Nash used those as well, but they were shorter. Um, 53 versus 54. These caps are brass on the 53. Also, this uh, the, the lever for your uh, butterfly comes out to about the edge of this bowl. The later ones come out further. These stamped steel pieces for your linkage, I had a bunch of those made. Um, those are just the earlier 53s. Then um, they changed the 54 design. You want to talk about this? I, I, I have a question about the screws that hold it on. <laughs> those are nice. Thank God for the internet. Those are nice. A couple things on this. This is car 130. The band on this washer bottle bracket. They say they're supposed to be about that thick. This was a wide one. Car 130. Uh, most guys, when they replace these, they'll put a skinny band on. Pasture cars had them too. Put a skinny band on, put this bracket on because they don't want to argue over judging. There are things that, that aren't right, even the new judging manual, in my opinion, that aren't right. I applaud the guys that did it. I know the guys that did it. Um, all you guys that do the judging and stuff, it's all volunteer. I mean, you guys are great. I mean, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of effort to do it. Things that are different. The clamps are different. These are the wrong clamps. 53 clamps are different than 54. This brass shut off valve is the same. The ears are missing off this one. Um, these brass wire ties that are wrapped around, those are factory. Uh, there's a new clip new in the last couple of years that holds a vacuum advanced line to the fuel line down underneath the cars. Um, if you ever have to buy one of those through the 54, uh, keep in mind from Chevys of the 40s, you can get two of them for about nine bucks. And there are people selling them for 50 bucks a shot. <laughs> so Chevys of the 40s. Okay. That way you're not paying out the nose for some of this stuff. Car 130 again, the body had never been off the frame, so you can see where all the pads are. The VIN number on the 53 is here on the frame. And the, and the font is really odd. It's almost like a Roman numeral. And they're all hand stamped individually, and they're just all over the place. And they're larger than the, than the, uh, the font on 54. 54 is going to be stamped a couple times here. Um, and the VINs were the only ones that had F. 55, when they started putting V8s on them, they put a V in front of the E to indicate a V8. Mm -hmm. In 56, where they were all V8s, the Secretary of State continued to use the VE because they are all V, but none of the VIN tags had that. E3 frame <coughs> doesn't have the three inch hole here or up here where your brake lines run on the, the fuel lines run on the inside. They run on the outside on the 53. And there's 23 differences between a 53 frame and a 54 frame. And most of it's either filling holes or drilling holes. Uh, and those big ones there in that corner are a real pain to, to uh, get welded up, shut, and uh, make undetectable. The body mounts behind the seat, in front of the rear wheels, they're different than the body mounts on a 54. So that's completely different as well. What you see is not not necessarily blackout. 53s, they put undercoating along between the rockers and, and where the frame would be. Uh, continued into the wheel wheel area, and they even sprayed it in here. So when you go get a, a 53 judge, if you use that much blackout with undercoat, they'll tell you that's not correct. There's proof that it is correct. They, they also continued that in the fender wells on a 53 forward in the back of your headlight buckets, your wiring, all sprayed with the undercoat. 
Car number nine. The real number nine. There's a fellow out there saying he's got number nine. And he doesn't. I've known about car number nine since I was in high school. Um, that car resides in Seymour, Indiana. It's got a 40-year um, title history to it. It's got a California pink slip from 40 years ago. Uh, that's the real number nine. <coughs> Early 53 frames, up to about car 71 anyway. Warner didn't have that on his. Well, See these loops? Yeah. The well, early the cars had that. Have been, uh, 71 is the latest car I've ever seen with those on it. I thought 67 was. I got 67 in the shop. Mm. Um, told those were tie downs during shipment. If they were if they were flip used for flipping the frames on the assembly line, they'd have went all the way through. I would have thought. So I'm, I tend to believe the tie downs for shipment. Mm -hmm. They'd stack the frames on top of each other. Steel hood from number nine, uh, number 56. This was at Flint in 2003 that the get together we had um, at the hotel. They did the, the bowling ball drop. We had I think 12 people from the original line and one of the supervisors, they told the story on the hood, the fab department made the steel hood. So they did a bowling ball drop from step ladders to see how the steel would hold up versus the fiberglass. They destroyed the, the steel hood pretty much. And the next day, here's your hood frame on that hood. And that's interesting on that hood, they've got studs coming down out of the hood instead of bolts going up and through it. This is a hinge from an early 53. Generally, between uh, the VIN numbers of the earliest through somewhere before car 20, this paddle or pad for the deck lid, the trunk lid, was thicker than the factory ones like you see on these see ones here in a 53. And the passing numbers are raised on the side. They changed that. Um, I don't know if they changed the, the angle, but the, the part number changed. And they stamped them on the arm. It was actually cast into it. It's EX17179. Um, that's, a, that's a very early. See how crooked everything is? This runs uphill in yeah, parallel. Like right, Your first zero is struck harder than the rest of the string. Struck by itself. That's in a gang struck by itself. This is struck by itself. These numbers are in a gang as well, except for the first zero. That's a typical 53 tag. That's what they'll look like. The stamp is not deep and wide. Um, it's kind of thin and narrow. And also this leg on this R, you've got a pretty big loop and kind of a short leg. If you look at the tag on a 56 up, this R is a smaller loop and a longer leg. They sell blank tags on eBay. And guys buy them and stamp them for an early car, and it's not right. Are those the right screws? No, those are the wrong screws, and uh, you'll notice the two different style up there. Yeah. yeah, two style screws up there, and they shouldn't have a black gasket between the body and uh, the courtesy lights. That's later car. What about the fiberglass that was covering that? Oh. They, they took resin, and I do the same thing. I just take a little brush and sloppily just brush it on there. What you're trying to do is, is fill the holes for the Phillips screws so you can't get in there. Um, I didn't have my 53 done when, when they had the 2003 deal at Flint. So I took the spare tire half moon and this fella here prepped my body and this fella here painted it. So I had that sign. Notice this is smooth. Smooth here. When a jig is symbol, um, unit will have claw strips about two or three inches wide 
connect it across here. <coughs> this must have been 130, because it, it was smooth. And you'll see it connecting the inner fenders as well. Well, why don't you point out the cables there for the antenna and the uh, lights? You know, that's what you need for the oil guys. The antenna runs through the rocket panel on the passenger side, and they're real fun to get new ones in and out. Um, in between the upper surround panel and the floor pan, inner fenders in the rear, they put, I call it dum dum in there. The sealant it never gets pliable, mm -hmm. it stays pliable. And you got to try and get wiring harnesses and antenna cables through there. It's not very fun. You got to dig most of it out, spray a bunch of WD 40 up in there, lithium grease, and Finally, get it to where you can you can get through there. Um, wire harness goes inside the trunk lid. Comes around for your uh, lights for your license plate. Is that part of it right there? Yeah, that's come out a hole right there. So you got to fish it through here. And as they join that frame and that skin together, there's all kinds of uh, vet bond in there, and it's just. Not fun to pull that stuff through there. Mm -hmm. Judd, you ran it in the case on 53 that these are supposed to be Phillips screws. They're not, they're clutch head. These are clutch head as well. Mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of original pictures of uh, 53s that I've taken apart that had the clutch head still in them. That's Warner's motor. Kind of sideways. That's Warner's motor. Mm -hmm. um, that's on the engine stand still. I had a, a stand built that will accept the engine transmission all together as assembly. Um, we fired up on that stand. Mm -hmm. This was the beginnings of the Motorama Fastback. Uh, an old pattern maker made the first attempt at, at the roof line, um, and it wasn't quite right. It wasn't angled enough. It was more like a station wagon almost, and it was too short. Um, so I made a panel out of the mold. I made the molds. Got it, Bob Mangold. We pioneered the funny car business. He's out in Washington State. He came to my place for about a month. Mm -hmm. We made three sets of molds. Um, I made a panel out of that, included this car, and raised the A pillars up two and a quarter inches, mm -hmm. which made the back angle down more. But I had to reconfigure the trunk lid to make it match the same slope. Um, so smoothed it all out, primed the whole thing, and then made new molds since I've done all those alterations. And then ripped all that stuff off the car. Rear quarters as well. And the new mold that I made was the roof and the rear quarters and the lower lens. So everything joins up where the cars were glued together from the factory. So you never have to worry about any kind of shrinkage or over time. And that was before the first, the first primer. So those parts got ripped off, and then I cut them up, set them out for the trash. And that's the car when it's done. Oh, cool. That was at Amelia Island. Um, Werner, got a big thanks to Werner. Werner kind of helped me get in there, I think. Um, it was easy. I just told Bill Warner this car existed. He was, yeah, uh, he's pretty excited about it. Yeah. They invite 300 cars every year from all over the world, and it's by invitation only. And we won uh, one award, the corporate award for being one of the top 10 out of the 300, and uh, one award for best new coach work or recreation. Um, and both times I was sitting on the other yeah, big awards, uh, their stands set up. You drive up on this fairway and come across, they talk to you and you drive off. Both times I was sitting there with the, with the 1938 Buick job. And for a car builder, that that made my whole existence there. That was neat. That car came out really good. Um, we put a <laughs> excuse me. We put a a two sixty five V eight in it. Changed the casting numbers to December fifty three. Um, stamped the pad EX forty six eleven since that body was forty six eleven of fifty four. Just had some fun with it and painted it blue green like a fifty three. It made it kind of look like a an early develop, developmental 265. And we told them that's what we did. You know, we didn't try to fool anybody. But it was it was kind of fun to do that because we got a V8 in it and a 12-volt battery and you can start it up and drive it anywhere. 
And that's the original. That's from GM Photograph. And they call him a Corvair. So that's your first Corvair. And Mike's had signs made just like those. And when I when I, when I designed that front windshield opening on that car, I needed to do something where it had trim. And I thought, well, I'm going to build more than one of these, I'm sure. So what I did, <laughs> I went to a guy in northern Indiana has a whole junkyard full of shoebox 55, 6, 7 Chevys. And I had him cut me out that opening out of the roof. And so we, we cut it and we shortened it. And that was the basis for the opening of the upper. So I've always got windshield trim that'll work. Extrusion, or the stamping on the lower trim piece, the lower trim piece is, is 55, you know, 53 to 57 uh, Corvette. 53 to 5, the extrusion is a little different from a side view, but 56 7, 56 to 62 is exactly the same as that shoebox Chevy side trim. So it, it fits right in itself perfect. Looks like it was made for it. So we, we got, but all the rest of the trim on the car, uh, the side window trim, the rear window trim, was all handmade and chrome. And the hood on that, on the, the car that we built, um, you've got these little scoops, these stainless steel inserts. I had the stainless steel inserts uh, water jetted. And I took the 54 hood, made the scoops, which is a little, a little piece in the back too, and uh, bonded those on the hood. Then I made a mold at the top of the hood, made a mold at the bottom of the hood, and then made the hood. That way, those additions to the hood will never shrink, yeah. never crack. I didn't want anything to be glued onto the car. I wanted it to be part of the car. <laughs> You'll see there's no gull wing on this car. So what I did, I took a gull wing, I cut it up, cut, I cut the wing off of it. Yeah, I got a bunch of them, so um, it wasn't very good one anyway. So I cut the wing off and then fiberglass the backside, you put some bond on it, sand it real nice and smooth, and had some made out of brass. It's got the original step in it, it's real stainless glue over the end of it. Had it made out of brass and had them chrome. And it fit right where it was supposed to go, and the stainless went right up against it. So total total time was about seven months from the time we started to the time we finished, if you just put all the time together. But uh, it, was, it was fun to do. On the very trunk opening, there's a stainless insert in there. It's got 270 Chevy bow ties. We had all that water jetted and high-polished stainless. Um, <laughs> uh, we, I don't know how many five-gallon buckets of resin and we probably went through three rolls of mat, ounce and a half mat about this tall, so big around. Because we had to make, it's like the doors. We had to make the doors because we had to use, I wanted to use latches from 56 through 62 to shut. So I made a hybrid door because those doors don't, don't latch on the body like a 56 and 62. They got these little cheap little hinges. So I made a hybrid door, and then I made molds off the, the shell and the outer, and then I made doors. I had to make nut plates and all that, glued to the two, you know, skin of the shell. So I had the late model latch at the, at the door jam, but it still hinged to the body like a 53 to 5. And then we had to make the window frame. I used street rod, straight up and down power windows inside the door. You just move the crank one way and it goes up, move the other way a little bit and it goes down. So we've got power windows in it that actually work. Uh, oh, it's just a lot of thought. Yeah. These are the holes for like Warner's gas door. Well, the later model ones have two screws going up from this way. The ones that swing over the top. Of the, there's the frame stamp. This is 293. This came from uh, Vancouver, Canada. I took that in the labor trade, that car, and it's about half done. It's painted. <coughs> the frame was very, very, very rusty, extremely. Um, so it's been cannibalized. We saved the numbers. There's your E53F. 
you can see they're all hand stamped on there. I always wanted to, are you familiar with the, with the uh, 57 Sebring Duntop car? The blue one? With the big fit, the fairing on behind the back? SR2? No. No, it's got a big fairing kind of like an SR2, but it's not. I think Warner's going to get them. Money. Magnesium. So hot, those guys couldn't touch it. Once they were, there's a big heat sink. Heat soap. This is the car. They made one. Uh, the story goes that they were going to crush it. And Zora hit it. And then the night before the race in 1967 for the 500, he donated to the museum. Now, Warner may know more about this story than me. Um, and then the next week, uh, DeLorean had to do the paperwork. Uh, I don't know how Zora did that fellow with his job. But, but that car's got a tube chassis. None, none of the parts in that car are standard Corvette. It's called a birdcage. It's all a, like a spaghetti chassis. All tubes welded together. Well, I always wanted to build that car. That's always been my favorite Corvette. So I sold a car to finance um, a guy named Mel Francis of Milwaukee. And Mel made me a full-size, full-scale model out of styrofoam so I could make molds. Uh, it's full-size. He scaled it with pictures and an 18th, 18th size die-cast car. And we're within probably a quarter inch anywhere. Maybe maybe better than that. But this was this was the beginning of that. Okay. Oh, I appreciate I appreciate you guys having me come up and, and uh, Thanks. I hope I didn't put too many of you to sleep, so appreciate Warner asking me to come up. Well, our pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for everything you guys do for the hobby too. Thank and you. And I know it's a, it's a, it's all volunteer, <laughs> and it's not fun for you guys sometimes when the owner's gone. No, it's this way. <laughs> really? I'm sure that you guys hate doing that. <laughs>